Well, the SEC is facing a new lawsuit over an alleged mass collection of personal financial data. New Civil Liberties Alliance filed a suit Tuesday alleging the agency's consolidated audit trail, known as CAT, is unconstitutional, unconstitutional and a government-mandated mass surveillance scheme that would reportedly be the largest of its kind in American history. My next guest is Stefan Padfield. He is the deputy director at the National Center F Free Enterprise Project, one of the plaintiffs in this lawsuit against the SEC. And Stefan joins us live now. Thanks so much for being here. So let's start with CAT, the Consolidated Audit Trail. What is it and who has access to the information that it actually collects? Well, thanks so much for having me. And basically what this Consolidated Audit Trail is, is just a massive storehouse of data that includes essentially all trades by all people, whether they be individuals or institutions. Uh, it is, as I think you already mentioned, probably the largest attempt to store private information of uh, citizens of this country outside of the NSA. And so we are very uh, proud to be one of the plaintiffs in this case challenging uh, this new uh, attempt by the SEC to really uh, surveil Americans in a way that is unprecedented and we believe to be unconstitutional. So you say this is a massive storage house of data. Should Americans, the average American, be concerned? Like what kind of data are we talking about? Like whatever I, I you know, I search on my cell phone or well, what is it? No, it's specifically data related to your financial transactions, okay. specifically as to stock trading, right? So every trade that you make as an individual uh, would be uh, you know, basically followed and tracked in this way. And it may sound benign at first, and uh, Hester Pierce, Commissioner Hester Pierce of the SEC, who has been a critic of this from the start, uh, made that same point. You know, someone might say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, so if they want to have my, uh, you know, trades online, so be it. But the problem is twofold. So one is, it's just when you add up all the data of all the people who are making trades on a daily basis, and this is just a growing field, certainly with retail investors and things like the gamification of trading and so on. Uh, so it's a massive amount of data. We know how that data can be uh, coordinated to give bigger pictures of people, but it's also the way that the data can be used. So someone, again, might say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, but then all of a sudden you realize that the laws that we are subject to uh, stretch you know, library volumes full, and so then it's a matter of simply, well, well, we're going to find this particular law, and all of a sudden you are being told you've done something wrong that you didn't know about. So the sort of weaponization mm. of this data tracking uh, is a very real possibility. So both on the level of just individual privacy, your data, nobody needs to know this, uh, you know, what trades you're doing and, and the information that it could uh, reveal about you and your associations. One of the claims here is a freedom of association claim, um, but then also the potential for it to be weaponized. Yeah, so what is your case against the SEC? You just kind of mentioned it a little bit. Sure. So there's a number of claims involved. First of all, there's the claim that the SEC does not have the authority, right? And so now we're talking about things like non-delegation, um, significant problems, uh, great questions, issues like that. Uh, and then we get into the issues of individual liberties, such as, the, as I mentioned, the First Amendment right to association. There's also due process rights. There's Fourth Amendment uh, search and seizure rights. And then we get into the Administrative Procedure Act, right? Did the SEC properly go through the process? process of adopting this. And so there's essentially eight counts, I believe, in the case uh, in total. So there's a number of problems that we see as plaintiffs and certainly the attorneys see uh, with this um, audit trail. So what is the outcome you guys are looking for? And realistically, can you get it? Oh, I think absolutely. Realistically, we want uh, certainly for it not to be implemented, right? So this has been something that has been going on all the way back to 20, 2010. So basically, in reaction to the flash crash, there was a memo that was released by the SEC suggesting they need more transparency of transactions. Uh, the complaint sets out very well how what is happening now with this audit trail really has nothing to do with what caused the flash crash. Uh, and so it's since then been evolving, and there's been various players coming in and out, but it's finally to the point where it may get rolled out by the end of 24, early 25. And so we simply want it to not be fully implemented. It's already at, at work in part, uh, but we just want to see it essentially struck down uh, in toto. I will say an additional claim is also where the money's coming from, right? So uh, so we've got major questions, we've got non-delegation, but we've also got the vesting in Congress of the right to fund. And essentially the SEC here has on its own just pulled significant dollars 
towards itself to fund this endeavor. And that's also seriously problematic. Well, Stefan uh, Patfield, thank you so much for coming on our show and explaining what's going on as the NCLA sues SEC for mass financial data collection. Please come back with an update. Thanks so much for having me. I'll be glad to. Thank you.